Hi everybody, it's Jennifer and I am back for another weekly video and I am excited to be here today. I'm excited about this topic because this is a topic in my opinion that if embraced can really open up worlds of possibility in your life. Um, before I get started, I just want to remind everybody if you have not already to subscribe to my weekly email blog and invite your friends. Uh, if you get the email, share it, forward it. There's a link right in there that people can subscribe. And um, I am just excited about our growing community and um, the bigger the better. So that being said, um, inside of growing possibility, I wanted to talk about a concept of and versus or. It is inherent, natural, common, typical uh, in the way that we live in general, not everybody all the time, but in general, is that we have a tendency to have a very narrow view and look through a lens of restriction or constriction or lack of choices. You will hear me say over and over again in different contexts that everything in life is a choice. Everything. I mean, at the end of the day, there is nothing in life that doesn't come down to choice. Um, things happen, it's not that we have a choice necessarily about external circumstances, but how we respond, how we react, what we say, what we do, anger, emotions, how we hold on to things, all of it is a choice. And that is an extremely powerful thing to embrace. But sometimes what happens with that is we have a tendency to see that choice also means exclusion. And so I want to be careful in saying that we can step out of choice. I don't mean choice in the bigger picture of choosing every day how our life is going to be and choosing happiness as a context. But sometimes we can step out of a restricted view of choice, meaning that choice does not have to equal exclusion. And that's where we get stuck. And most of the times in life that people have an experience of stuckness or, or you know, they're, they're, they're just trapped is because there's somewhere where they're, they're seeing that they have to choose and either they don't want to choose either choice or they want to choose both and they don't want to have to give either one up. And when that happens, it can make it very difficult to make a decision and we tend to just not do anything and then we're stuck. That is not a pleasant place to be. It is a disempowering place to be. And um, it's not a way to generate the happiness and joy that we're all committed to creating in our lives. So when we look at situations that, you know, and just throwing out some examples, um, you know, I can be happy or I can stay in this job. You know, if you're not happy in a job, you either, you either leave or you're miserable. You, you know, you could say an example might be, I can either be in this amazing relationship with this person or I can spend time with my friends and cultivate my friendships. You know, I can find a great apartment or I can keep my beloved pet, but I can't do both. Um, I can have a really great family and be an amazing parent, or I can have an amazing career and be successful in whatever I choose to do. But I can't have both. It's either or. I have to pick, right? That's always this feeling of I have to pick. And then what do you do? Family, career, ugh, right? And we end up going through life like, ugh, instead of going through life like, ah. And very often those situations are not real. You know, we, we create in our minds this limit, like we have to pick between these things because we don't have a view of, of, of having it all. Um, I personally lived that way for a long time, you know, especially when I owned my practice. You know, I can, I, I, I had, a, my daughter was young, you know, I can either spend time with her or I can run my practice properly, you know, and, and I ended up working a lot. You know, uh, you know, I, I can either, you know, be a great veterinarian or I can take care of myself. You know, I, I, I live that. Well, I don't have time. I, I have to do this. I, I can't do both. I don't have time for it all. 
Um, and that's where, especially in veterinary medicine, we have a tendency to sacrifice, you know, because we're, we are committed, you know, you're, nobody's getting into vet school and then out of vet school and then being successful as a veterinarian if you're not committed, right? We all know that. So with that, that becomes a priority. You're not going to go through what, what it takes and then be like, eh. I mean, some people are, they, they, they lose interest and they move on and that's perfectly okay. But the vast majority of us, you're committed to your career, right? So when you have to pick, what goes by the wayside? Time with our children, time at the gym or walking or yoga or whatever, riding your bike, whatever your exercise of choices, meditation, friendships, bye-bye, all gone because I can't do it all, I have to pick. And after everything I've been through and I have to make money, I'm gonna pick my career. You know, I've been there, I've done all of that. I totally get it, it's totally normal and natural and it takes a conscious effort to start to shift that. Now, if you were to take all of those same statements and do nothing but replace the word or with the word and, and start to think, you know what? I can have a family and a great career. I can find a great apartment somewhere and I can keep my dog. I don't know where that's gonna be, but I know I can do it and I will. You know, I can be in this great relationship with this person who I love dearly and I can find time to be with my friends and cultivate these friendships. You know, and even for me right now, these are just examples that are not mine. Even just saying it, I mean, you could probably play this video back and see a difference in my energy and how I'm saying these sentences. And I'm not doing it on purpose because there's an upliftment when all of a sudden you use the word and. It does not matter if right now you see how. The how is irrelevant. But once you say it, you state it as possible then the how will unfold. Then you just get busy figuring it out. We'll look for apartments, who takes dogs, where do I wanna live? How big does it have to be? Like the logistics are secondary. They work themselves out. First, you have to state it's possible, but when you state, I cannot find a good apartment and keep my dog, then it's like, what do you do now? You sit. So my recommendation well, and I, and I can tell you from personal experience, that's what started to happen. I was tired of being unhappy. I was tired of not taking care of myself, of being miserable, and quite frankly, being a victim. Because that's really what it comes down to, is, is being a victim. Well, I can't work out because I have to work all the time, or I can't, no, 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 no. It's a choice. It's a choice. And if you consciously say, I am choosing to work so much that I can't do any of these other things, then own it. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as you are choosing it. But what I would recommend to do is go through your life and think about all of the places that you're stuck. Think about what's not working and where you're not taking action because for some reason you perceive that there's a block. There's some reason you can't do what you're doing now and whatever, or, not do what you're doing now and still have, you know? Putting up with bullies is a really great example. Why do people tolerate that? Why do people, why do, people do any of this? Because of fear, because of a limited perspective and the, and the unknown and not having the faith in, in themselves. But what if you were able to say, or somebody were able to say, you know what, I can, not put up with a bully, and I can keep this job. Versus I have to put up with their stuff or I have to leave, right? Like there's so many. So where in your life does this show up? Where are you stuck? Where is there a job, a relationship, friendship, self-care, your house, cleaning your house, cleaning out the garage? You know, I can clean out the garage. Or what if you were to say, you know what? I'm gonna have fun this weekend and I'm gonna clean out the garage. How can I make that happen? So. Think of your life. Where is that showing up for you? I would suggest getting out your iPad or a pad of paper or however you like to take notes 
and write out the sentences. Where am I stuck? I'm stuck around X. What choice do I perceive that I have to make that's having me not do that? Or why am I not doing it would be a way to look at it. I'm not doing it because I'm afraid I'll lose my job or I don't have time or whatever. Then say, I can have this or I can have time for that. Whatever is appropriate for you, write it out, write all the sentences out and then really look at them and see how, do, how does reading that back make you feel? How is your energy? Is your energy uplifted and excited? Or is your energy like, mm, this sucks? You know, just, just really feel into it. And then say, how true is this? I know, I know it seems true, but how true is it really? Because hint, it's not. Then rewrite every sentence and replace the word or with a capital and. A and D, all capitals, and write them out and then sit there and read them multiple times. I can have this and I can have that. Because you know what, in that moment, all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I never thought of that. And sometimes it is as simple as we weren't afraid or we weren't intimidated. We just, it never occurred to us that you could have it all. So this concept for me has been a game changer in my life. And I would strongly recommend you starting to look at letting go of holding it as truth, some of these limitations that are placed by you in your life and looking at where you can replace or with and and open up possibilities, open up hope, open up excitement, open up joy, open up having it all. So thank you. I hope this helped. Um, I would love to hear from anybody at any time, something that opened up for you inside of doing this, something that you created that you thought you couldn't create, or two things you have that you thought you had to pick between, or two things you got rid of that you thought you had to keep one. I'd love to hear the feedback. Um, it's so exciting for me because sometimes it's these little things that can make a big difference. So again, um, thank you for, for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, subscribe to the, to the email blog. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care. Bye-bye.